Welcome back to Let's Play Battlefield 1942. On today's episode, we have the Battle of Bocage. The round has been going on probably less than a minute or so. The Allies have captured this flag and the other flag, being a little bit undescriptive, but uh, these aren't very uh, name-worthy flags. They're just, you know, that flag on that side of the river, the flag on the other side of the river, and the, the flag with the little shack. It's always kind of a race to see who gets that shack flag in the middle. Kind of like the hill flag on Kharkov from way back when. You've got flags on each side of the river nearer to the main bases of the opposing teams. They usually get split. And the tiebreaker goes to whoever gets the shack flag. And since it's three flags, you inflict bleed. The primary action on this map always takes place around these bridges, so the grenades come to really good use. It's not uncommon if you live long enough to steal grenades off the dead bodies of people you've just killed just to get some extra grenades. And luckily that Axis guy had three grenades that he hadn't used yet. And then you just switch back to the kit that you had before. Now, if that had been a German medic, I probably would have kept it. And uh, I think I just took... Yeah, I've got a German medic now. And I'll keep this machine gun for as long as I can, because the German machine gun, of course, is slightly more accurate than the American version. And although the American version has more stopping power, I just kind of prefer this one. On this game, you always got to go for accuracy over damage, because when you've got lag and people are moving targets on a game like this, it's always more important to be accurate, especially since headshots are worth more damage. So if you can land more bullets into the enemy body and especially into the enemy's head, it's uh, you get both accuracy and you get the extra damage. Looks like I just got sniped there by somebody. I didn't realize I was within the view of any snipers, but you always gotta, yeah, that was probably the guy right there. You always gotta stay on the move whenever possible. There's a medicine cabinet inside that windmill on the lower floor, so if you're not a medic, you can just stop in there and get some health. There's also ammunition inside this version of the windmill, but it's way up top on the upper floor. Interestingly, it's a copy of the windmill from Battle of the Bulge with one important difference. The Battle of the Bulge windmill does not have the medicine cabinet. More importantly, it doesn't have the ammo crate. On Battle of the Bulge, the windmill is an actual control point where here it's just kind of a useful structure. And if you want, you can defend the windmill flag on the Battle of the Bulge, or any windmill for that matter, using your X-Packs if you're an engineer. You just throw dynamite to the first floor, climb up the stairs, and whenever people run in there, you just detonate them. But on Battle of the Bulge, that allows you to actually defend a flag. So presumably they didn't want people to be able to sit in there all day, just constantly reloading their ammo and detonating the X-Packs. Whereas here, since it's not a flag and it's not quite as important, they allow you to do that by having the ammo crate up top. Here's yet another dead enemy medic. There's sometimes a reload bug on this game. When you pick up the kit of a dead soldier, uh, for whatever reason, sometimes it won't allow you to quite reload all the way, or sometimes it'll have half a clip when you finish reloading, so you just got to be aware of that. I noticed that this uh, 
medic that I picked up the machine gun from. He doesn't have any more clips of ammo in his machine gun, so I'm going to head up here and show you the ammo crates. For whatever reason, the clips of the machine gun actually don't reload all that quickly. Whereas if you have a tank and you just roll up to one of those ammo crates, the number of tank shells you have immediately jumps up to maximum. Just now I uh, took advantage of the windmill to try to get some kind of an obstacle between me and the guy while he still had bullets in his machine gun. And once you hear that he stopped firing, it's very likely that he's reloading, so you go in for the kill then. There's no reload an animation for the soldiers that you see. You can see yourself reload, but you cannot tell whether the other soldiers are reloading because there's no graphical indication of it. You just have to kind of figure out by whether or not they're shooting at you. Conserving your ammunition so you don't have to reload is yet another reason why you should fire in short bursts. The other reason, of course, being that you improve your accuracy that way. And again, I'm already out of... I'm surprised I'm already out of machine gun clips. That engineer I just walked past on the stair had his detonator out. I think he's got some X-packs on the bottom floor of the windmill, and he's doing that little defensive thing that I talked about. Yeah, he had an X-pack on that little thing that rotates on the bottom floor of the windmill. If you have an X-pack sitting on top of one of those things, you should be able to get the kill uh, no matter what. Whereas if it's sitting on one side of that concrete thing on the floor, you'll only be able to kill people on the proper side. And I totally did not see that guy who was hiding, just laying prone there right on the side. I guess the shadow of the in the dark bricks with his uniform where I just wasn't paying enough attention. I had a really long... Uh, respawn timer there. I guess I must have team killed somebody at some point and got penalized for it. Usually that only lasts for the just the next spawn that you go through. So the next time I die and respawn it should be back to normal. The enemy tiger is there off in the distance guarding that flag. He's probably going to go over the bridge, so I'm not going to be able to go that way. There are two little weird ramps right over near the river. And if you're really lucky, you can just go down the ramp, swim across, and go up the next ramp on the other side. The unfortunate thing is that if there's any enemy who has any clue that you're going to do that, he just goes over there and shoots at you while you're in the river. And uh, if you're going down the ramp, you might just toss some grenades down there as well. So there's always a question of luck. Is, is someone going to think to look down there just as you're going across? But since I've gone all the way over here, I may as well risk it. Okay, I think I've been spotted by somebody. I think I heard a bullet splashing in the water. Yeah, I've got a couple guys. Someone threw a grenade at me. Stay tuned for part two.